People have asked many times why ARP isn't doing what they expect it to when they play a keyboard. MIDI Cake ARP doesn't function the same way as a classic arpeggiator. So in this video I want to explain the key difference and why it makes MIDI Cake ARP so interesting. So why doesn't ARP arpeggiate like a classic arpeggiator? Let's start with a simple arpeggiator and how it's implemented. I'm using the system one here and its arpeggiator has only a couple of basic parameters. It has a scatter function as well, but that's too random for me. So I've got it set to play a local sound and uh, I've also got it outputting uh, to the visualizer so you can see the notes visually. Let's play a chord. Now an arpeggio is just a broken chord. It's the individual notes of that chord played separately. So now we'll turn on the arpeggiator function to see what it does. It's essentially automating that process of playing the broken chord. Um, let's have a look at the settings. We're currently on up. We can do up, down. And we can do down. There's some timing functions as well. Like we can four beats per bar, eight beats per bar, 16 beats per bar, and then into triplets. So multiples of three all fitting in that same MIDI bar. You have to note that it's whatever keys are pressed that determine the notes that are arpeggiated. We can also play the same note across multiple octaves. Let's tweak the settings again. Now let's look at what happens if I play a different number of notes. If I play three, but if I play four, it's going to play those four notes. It's going to arpeggiate over the however many notes that I hold. And we can play two notes or just a single note. Now that shift between different numbers of notes they create different rhythmic patterns from one to the other. Now this is a good thing and also maybe a bad thing. It can be used to make really interesting melodies um, but they can also cause a kind of jarring when you get those rhythmic changes in the wrong place. And sometimes the note patterns don't resolve in a pleasant way. And that's just because of the maths. There's loads of creative options with arpeggiators, though. That's what makes them so interesting. Let's reiterate, though, the important point for this video is that the notes that you or the keys that you press are the notes that are going to be arpeggiated. Now, ARP doesn't do that. So let's set system one to local off so that the keyboard is now decoupled from the synth and uh, the MIDI notes are going to be outputted instead to ARP. Um, let's come into ARP and go into the menu and we'll change MIDI sync channel to one to match the output from the system one. So now uh, I also need to turn the arpeggiator off while I remember. Um, so now you'll see what happens is when I play the keys on the keyboard, it's going to highlight those same notes on the keyboard on ARP. And you see the lights are indicating to show which notes I'm pressing. But the key difference is that ARP only cares about the note indexes within the 12 available semitones. It's these note indexes that define the notes that are available to each of ARP's four arpeggiators. Let's unmute the arpeggiator and see what happens. So I'm getting the same pattern that I had with the System 1 earlier. Um, but what happens if I play four notes? 
I'm still getting a three note sequence. And that's intentional because on this particular ARP, the steps is set to three. There are three steps in the sequence. And it doesn't really matter how many notes that I play. It's only going to play three notes of the sequence. If I change that to four steps and play that same three note chord, we're now getting a four step sequence and I play four notes or three notes or two notes or even just one note. And it still plays that four step sequence because that's what's defined in the steps. I can set this right up to something crazy like 16 and you will get a sequence that's based on 16 steps and will repeat after that time. Now the way it's bouncing around like that is to do with the parameters that are set for this particular arpeggiator and that's what makes it kind of powerful. The key to all this is the predictable behavior that you predefine when you program the sequences for each individual art within MIDI Cake Art. One other piece of information is taken from the keyboard and that's the root note um, where the chord is being played from. So I can play So to clarify, ARP will start its sequence from the lowest note played on the keyboard and track with whatever it is that you're playing. So unlike a classic arpeggiator, ARP doesn't use specific notes to, that you play on the keyboard to define the sequence. Instead, the notes that you play on the keyboard define the notes that are available to the arpeggiator's sequences. This idea is fundamental to the way art works in that it was originally conceived to be an accompaniment device. So let me show you what I mean by that. Let's bring in the Blofeld. I'm going to be running it on a different MIDI channel. It'll appear red on the LEDs. And I'm going to set system one back to being its own local source. So I'm going to turn off the arpeggiator that's playing System 1 and I'm going to turn on the arpeggiator that's playing the Blofeld. And now when I play, we get the sequence that's defined on this arpeggiator for the Blofeld. That is a 8 beats per bar, 6 step, direction up pattern. So I'm going to change the sound that we're playing on the System 1. And I'm going to play a piece on the keyboard. But listen to what the Blofeld's doing while that music is being played. You see how the Blofeld tracked to the notes that I was playing, and yet it kept its rhythmic pattern it kept its basic melody structure throughout. Hopefully you can see the power that this concept brings. ARP doesn't arpeggiate like a classic arpeggiator. The difference is only subtle, but it enables you to create predictable, deterministic and repeatable melodies that overlay your performance while staying perfectly in sync with it. There is, after all, no such thing as random. <laughs>